So the last project of 2019 was to get the door frame fitted in the porch. This one was over several days, so there's all sorts of footage and chopped around a bit, so I'll try and explain a little bit about what's going on here. The first thing to do was to get a treated sole plate down and on a DPC, that would form our base for it to sit on. The idea being that our door frame is going to be just sitting inside of the green oak frame that we've got. Now it doesn't need to be too snug, so I'm just making sure that there's a little bit of uh, I'm not having to drive it in to, to fit it in place and I also took the chance to put a chamfer on all of the green oak frame because I couldn't do that once this door frame is fitted. I'll explain a little bit later in the video how and the options I'm going for and how I'm going to fit this but essentially I needed to install a thick oak bead and that's glued in place, pinned and then I screwed and plugged it and that will be the inside surface our frame is being fixed against. The main aim here is to actually not secure anything directly into the green oak frame, but we'll come back to that later. Before I installed the door frame, I wanted to create a bit of a flashing or like a pan under the sill of the, the door. That was partly to protect the DPM, which is under the slab as it comes up. Um, there's a little bit of it that would be exposed so I've created this lead flashing which co covers over and then it's backfilled with a little bit of sand just so everything's protected there and then I got on with installing this tape now the tape that I'm using is an expanding I think it's an EPDM tape it expands slightly uh, so therefore it compresses as well so we can get a really nice seal there and it'll be on both sides of the door frame and the door frame is also pre-finished, which I figured would help get a really good seal. So with those oak beads and the tape in place, I could then go ahead with fitting the door frame. The idea being the position of those oak beads allows for the face of the door frame to be flush with the oak posts, which will help us with the next step. Right now at a point where I'm going to cut these oak face boards. Right, complete failed attempt to do this online in SketchUp. And my, everything crashed, and didn't work. So I've gone old school. Let me show you the options I've kind of got to play with. Right, the most basic option is this is our oak post. It's just to put a bead kind of fixed into it either side of our double glaze unit or in our case that's going to be a door frame. What that does is creates a weak spot here, really, because if this shrinks and moves and, and this comes away, you basically have a gap that can open up all the way through, you know, where the two pieces join, and it's not really uh, a good option. This is another way, a bit more machining and planning involved. You can actually cut away um, a rebate in the oak, structural oak itself, and then the unit, double glazed unit, would sit in that and then you'd use an oak capping board on the outside, uh, sandwiched between, you know, you'd put your tapes in here and you'd be fixing into the oak like that. Uh, and then these will all be plugged. Um, this is probably the most common option, I think, if you're direct glazing. So your oak frame remains completely untouched and you put in two kind of battens, same thickness as your double glazing. Um, these are kind of, we're looking down from the top here. Then you just have your tapes either side of the, the frame and then you'd have an oak board here. So when you look from the front, you're basically seeing the frame as it would be because this is the same dimension and it's all oak. So it, it appears that these go in, but actually they're completely isolated from the timber. So this can shrink, do what it wants and it won't crack or mess around with the, the ceiling of the glass. This one here is what we've, decided to go with because ours is simply a door frame rather than a, a timber, or rather than a double glazed unit. 
So I've actually gone for an oversized face board on the outside, which makes everything look a little bit more chunky as well, which I like, um, and put a simple bead on the inside, which is glued and screwed and fixed in here. So that's kind of secondary, really. That's just holding everything in place. The door frame is level with the front of the oak post, and then this is screwed in and, and plugged with oak pellets. Um, so it's completely sealed in with the two tapes. And then as a final twist, if you were to use a direct glazing method, which is this one here, which is what we plan to do with another build in the future, they're fixed glazing, so they don't open and close. So if you've got big expanses of glass, that works great. But if you do need a door or opening, you can actually fabricate your door frame to have an extra leg of timber here, the same thickness as your double glaze unit. So whether that be, let's say 28 mil, you'd have this section here measuring 28, that gets sandwiched in, in exactly the same. And then that leaves you with a normal uh, timber door, timber framed uh, window where you can have your opening um, for ventilation or access. By no means an expert on this, but they're kind of the options that I was playing with. And by going this route, I can use an off the shelf door frame. I can use just a simple oak face capping board on the outside. And then we'll just make up with the extra oak that we've got, the off cuts. We can make up a nice solid bead that sits on the inside and still sandwich it with tapes to, um, to get a really good seal. So now we know what route we're going to take with the oak frame glazing. So I'm going to cut these face boards and that will uh, basically sandwich the frame. So with the remaining oak, I'm cutting up some trim pieces which will be used on the cladding wall uh, of the porch and then also making up these beads which you've seen me fit earlier in the video. I decided rather than set up a router table which I don't really have, uh, just to cut a, a chamfer on these, it kind of worked and it was certainly enough for what I needed uh, for these internal ones, albeit that it was a little bit rough and I actually did it a different method. Uh, for the external beads which will be in a future video. I then moved on to drilling and countersinking the holes uh, that we're going to use to fix them onto the oak posts. These are at 600 centers and they have a corresponding plug cutter and I'll cut that from the same timber and hopefully we can get the grain matching somewhere close. So my depth stop doesn't work on the drill here but I'm cutting them almost all the way through and then once I've done that, then we can take them to the bandsaw, cut everything at once and they'll all drop out, rather than having to remove them from the plug cutter each time. I then went about trying to secure everything together before I fit it in place. I figured that's a, a good way of getting all my joins really tight. I also needed to create an L-shaped capping board for the corner. That would take us around the corner to where the cladding starts and to do that I this is nice dry oak so I went about gluing and pockets screwing that in from the inside. They'll all be hidden and it was a lot easier to do this way than try and do it in, in situ. And then, uh, like I have with all the joinery, I've pre-finished everything in the workshop this time of year, and just it's just a lot more of a controlled environment to get all the finish done, all the sanding, 
and also a bit of a ongoing theme with this porch is I should put a chamfer on just about everything so just taking the edges off and it just gives it that little bit of an extra extra touch And then this is the end of the boards and I'm just putting some pocket holes in there. The idea being that I'm hoping I can secure all three pieces together and raise them as one to cap off the whole of the oak frame. Wishful thinking I know. This is the same finish I used for the door frame, it's just the clear Osmo UV oil. This will just hold off any greying of the oak. If I'd used solid oak for everything, I might have just let it all grey and silver. But because I'm using a few different timbers and the door is a veneer, I really need to get a finish on everything. So that's why the whole thing's ended up looking a lot more finished and perhaps a little bit more modern than if we'd gone with just a standard unfinished rough sawn oak look. Right, we shifted on a couple of days because it was just uh, atrocious weather. So I'm now just having a little play around dry fitting our cover boards. And this is what is gonna be our fixing mechanism for securing our frame in place. Right, a little bit more off here and then what I'm going to do is undercut the bottom just so that if any water does even though we've got that big overhang if any water does hit here it's not going to you know it's going to form a drip edge right that's all the fiddly cutting done now I'm going to try and fix them together as a frame and put it up as one probably not necessary but it's worth a go um, before anyone mentions it I do have a flu plume adapter coming for this to send it up beyond the rooftop Now I'm not going to glue these, there's really no need, especially because I can pull the joint tight anyway here. We don't need it for strength, it's just to hold the, hold the joint and everything's going to be screwed in place. Let's see if it will... It's quite heavy. Probably a two person maneuver. Yeah. Right, final amendments are done, so now I need to take it back down, give that a little wipe over with the Osmo, then I need to put our seal, our gasket, on there before we screw it on tight. Is sealing it and just helping by kind of get everything fitting nicely this does help in a big way as far as air tightness I mean it's not gonna get you to a an airtight level really as far as like passive house you'd have to use all sorts of tapes as well but just as far as draft and things like that you can imagine this we, we know this is fairly stable this is definitely gonna shrink and we're expecting that probably to shrink by two or three mil so this frame here is not connected in any way to our structure. It's basically floating. It's clamped with um, these foam gaskets so that if there is movement there, and this will stay where it is, if that beam there or post there pulls away just slightly, it's still gonna remain completely sealed. Whereas if you try and just put a bead on the inside and outside, just timber, whether it's glued or not, you're, you're likely going to, going to end up with gaps and we've seen it in a friend's house who just had an extension done in the last six months and already daylight because things move um, and you've got to allow for that. Right, install time. I haven't really pushed it home just in case too much of it's showing anywhere and I can just 
back of the way. So we'll have a, a third and final dry set now. So the main priority is to get this up against the, the top. Now, because we're going into the green oak, I've got stainless screws and I've got some four mil and five mil. And I think the five mil should work fine. Uh, and they'll be seated into those countersink sort of holes ready to be plugged. And I'll probably try and tighten them up one by one. It's worth getting them right because it doesn't take much. You know, you put them in halfway and these can snap. That's why five mil or above are probably better than going with those four mil because they will shear off. They almost come out a little bit at the bottom. See what I mean? Now we've plumbed it up. This notch is bigger than it needs to be. Diddly squats. That's not not clever. See this compress as we put it in. Bearing in mind we've got um, not a single fixing on this frame. It is solid. Good, all done. Time for soup. Right, good soup. Thank you, Joe. Curried parsnip it was today. Right. Two choices now. My window guy, half a mile down the road, has my double glazing units for here and here, and they arrived yesterday. Could go and pick those up and put them in, but I've still got to machine the, uh, the beading a little bit to get it nice. I'm tempted to go for the door. We'll leave it there. Spoiler alert, I went for the door next, and that will be in a future video, but the whole thing is really shaping up. Any comments, stick them down below. Hopefully I'll try and answer some of those questions. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time.